Hello, welcome to this video. We'll learn uh, here about combined loads and stresses in transmission shafts. So let's review what we know so far. Uh, we learn about transmission shafts uh, mainly from the, the torque moment that, and twisting moments they, they transmit. So we learn about power transmission uh, and torques. And we calculate shear stresses because of these torques. And then we divert a little learned and learned about uh, transformation of stresses and combine of stresses and uh, the transformation of normal and shear stress to result in maximum uh, principal normal stress in a different orientation and also maximum shear stress at a different orientation. So with that, we'll go back to transmission shafts and now really think about uh, what are what's the maximum a uh, set of stresses developing in shafts, knowing now that uh, combined loads result in combined stresses that together will result in uh, maximum transform stresses at some orientation. Uh, so let's explain here um, the concept we'll learn using that example. So we have here that uh, transmission shaft that's mainly supported at the end, uh, the left end of it. And we have two gears with R1 and R2. Um, and uh, there is a, a other set of, like, the system is not shown completely here, but there is some gear attached uh, to the first one and results in P uh, force on the gear tooth. And then there is K force on the second gear here, but it's horizontal force here. So P is vertical, K is horizontal. Uh, and I'm interested in the stresses at point B. So if I take a section at point B and show here my axes, and I want to figure out the internal forces uh, at the cut uh, at point B. So the easy ones to figure out are the forces. So you just move the forces to the centroid of the section, so K and P here. Uh, so K is uh, shear force in the Z direction, and P is also shear force in the uh, y direction. Typically in shafts there are no normal uh, axial uh, forces. Then we can think of when we move the forces now to the center of the section we result uh, in uh, moments. So these forces move along distances here so I need to account for the moments as part of the internal forces. Uh, so starting with here moment around the y axis and I see here k is uh, giving us moment around the y over the distance L1 plus L2. So moment is equal to the force times the distance. And uh, if I look at now moment around the z, I see k doesn't contribute to the z because it's parallel to the z-axis, but p is perpendicular to it, and it's not going through uh, the z-axis. So now mz is equal to p times L1. And if I look at the moment around the x, which I will call here T torque, is equal to uh, the torque from P and K around the x-axis. So each one is multiplied by its uh, gear uh, radius here, R1 or R2. So now I have the internal forces. What we'll do is figure out the uh, shear stresses development uh, from the torque uh, T. And, and also from the shear forces that we have. So from the torque, Tc over J is the formula we're going to use, or from the shear forces, it's Pq over It. Now, typically from practice in a standard shaft and transmission system, um, the shear force from shear, the shear stresses from shear forces are typically negligible or small compared to the shear stresses from the torques. And this is why we will neglect these uh, shear for stresses from shear forces. And we'll focus mainly here on tau equals to Tc over uh, J. So trying to figure out the maximum shear stress at B, and now we're thinking about not maximum direct stress from directly from the torque, but I'm thinking about the transformed maximum stress. So I need to account for now both the initial uh, normal stress and shear stress that I have from the internal forces I have. So now I ended up with mainly my, mz, and the torque. 
and I'm representing MYMZ with this double headed arrow to help me kind of determine the direction of it using vector notations. So MY is a positive moment and MZ is a negative moment. Uh, if, if I uh, but actually yeah Z is actually also is a positive moment MZ is a positive moment. Uh, so knowing now that using the what we learn in statics I can actually get the resultant of these two moments so if there is a moment going like this and a moment like that so a moment here and a moment here so there is a moment resultant for both of them and I can figure out the direction using the vectors that the double headed vectors that I have here so if my is going positive y and mz is going positive z then the resultant will be in between so from vector notations if we're gonna review statics uh, you will remember that and the idea now is we'll have new look of internal forces so we'll combine both my and mz into an m resultant uh, value here and it goes goes here between the of, uh, following the directions of my and mz it's going into the first quadrant of y and z and remember z is pointing to the left and then i have the torque so this is kind of um you know uh, kind of uh, reducing my representation of internal forces by first neglecting shear stress from shear forces combining the bending moments into one single bending moment now around its own kind of axis uh, or neutral axis of the section and now I can follow the normal stresses developed by this resultant moment M bar and I can see here there is a maximum uh, a point with maximum normal stress I will call it here M and uh, this M uh, point will have maximum normal stress sigma M is equal to M bar C over I and also tau uh, maximum because it's at the outer fibers of the sections here uh, so it's equal the tau m is equal to tc over uh, j so now i have what i want uh, initially is the stresses that are developed based on the internal forces i have sigma m and i have tau m now if i represent now these on the stress block and draw the more circles to figure, try to figure out now tau max what's the actual uh, maximum stress that's developed at point B not in the, the orientation that I had to decide to cut at point B but at some other orientation and that's what we will design for uh, so tau max here from more circle is equal to the radius and to figure out the value for it, for it we'll look at this uh, triangle and it's equal to the square root of the horizontal distance, which is equal to sigma m minus sigma vertical to it, which is in this case 0, divided by 2. That's to the power 2 plus tau m, which is the vertical side of the uh, triangle. And I will end up here, if I plug in sigma m uh, to be equal to uh, mc over i, m bar c over i and i also remember that in circular sections uh, i x or in this case i y and i z are the same and they're called just i and the polar moment of inertia j is equal to i y plus i z uh, which in this case is just basically 2i so i can summarize or simplify the formula here by seeing there's a common value c over j and it's a square under the square root so now it becomes c over g outside of square square root and now it's square root of m bar square plus t square remember m bar square is equal to m y square plus m uh, z square so actually i'll fix that uh, it should not be uh, m x it should be uh, m z because this specific example here, I'm dealing with the y and z axes. Uh, and that's great. Now I have tau max, the maximum uh, shear stress at any point, and the true maximum, meaning the true uh, maximum transformed shear stress, is with this simple formula. At any section, I just need to calculate the two bending moments acting on that section and the torque. 
and I will just figure out now if I know the size of the section C over J and J here is pi C to the power 4 over 2 I will be able to calculate right away tail max and if I am sizing and designing the shaft then I will start the other way I will say tau max that's developed in this shaft at some point should be less than tau allow and now that will help me to size and design that shaft by selecting the radius or the diameter of the shaft that will safely carry uh, the loads applied here which are two bending moments and uh, the, sh the, the torque the twisting moment remember we are ignoring here the shearing action from the shear forces because they are minimal compared to the twisting uh, moment so that was an intro to show you how we used um, what we learned about combined loads and uh, transformation of stresses resulting from them into uh, combined stresses or what we call here principal stresses and maximum shear stress and as we're dealing with shafts, so we're dealing here with maximum shear stress. This is the real thing here. That's the one that that's critically here um, controlling the size of the shaft and the diameter of it. And we ended up with a formula that's helping us to select the size of the shaft. So um, in, a, in the next video, we'll see uh, an example of that, uh, how we actually apply this formula and we'll see how much of the leg work a lot of stuff need to be done to be able to use this formula which is trying to figure out what is really the section that has the maximum bending moments and torque at the same section which is in such problem is the real thing is finding that critical section so um thanks for watching we'll see you in the this next video uh, take care of yourself and those around you see you